What's going on my friends? My name's Corrupt and it's time to talk about the top 5 strongest Town Hall 12 attack strategies that you can use here in 2020 in Clash of Clans. Starting off here at number 5, we have got the Zap Yeti Smash, or a Yeti Smash in general. Why is this attack strategy so effective in war at Town Hall 12 and even in other areas of the game like farming and trophy pushing? Well, the main thing that you want to consider is that it is using a bulk of the Yetis moving in for the Town Hall and smashing through the rest of the base. This is going to be very determined upon the spells that you're bringing to get them in. So this can be Quad Quake, this can be a Jump Spell, this really just depends on the army composition. One of the biggest things though that you're doing is using a Warden Walk. More often than not, you're looking for a small area of the base that you can get rid of some structures in order to create a small little path so that that way there you've created the funnel just enough so, for, so that the yetis can move straight in you want to really consider a bunch of different things if you're going to be using this like an example if there is a storage right in front of something like a multi inferno and sometimes it might be a good idea to walk a an inferno with the warden however if there is a storage in the way it's a better idea to use a zap quake you're going to be able to get rid of roughly the same amount of buildings but you're also not having to fight the storage which is going to be a huge time waster if you're just going to let your warden reach there so you want to consider those small things after just creating the funnel on this side by using the Zap Quake and the Warden Walk, then you can go ahead and create the other side of the funnel by using the King and or Siege Barrack. In this case, we're just going to be using a Baby Dragon and the King to create the funnel going down this way. We're going to use the Hog Riders from the Siege Barrack in order to clear defensive structures that are a little bit more towards the outside, including the Eagle Artillery. Then once you've gotten a clear set funnel, you want to make sure that you're entering into the Town Hall and then using a jump spell a little bit later on in order to push your entire army into the base. Those are just small things that you really want to consider if you're going to be using this attack. So we're going to see the use of the Warden Walk here, but also we're going to be looking at the use of the Zap Quake. Notice that the Lightning Spells and Earthquake are going to come down all around the Inferno Tower. That way we're also getting rid of structures that may be around there only leaving the cannon, archer tower, or air defense, and also a couple other structures around there, like the storage. So once you've kind of created that part of the funnel, it's all set in stone. Once you've set a good one, you can use the yetis within his aura to lure him to help support the yetis. That's exactly what you want to do in case you've already created the funnel, you're already done with your warden walk, you then want to just go in and send in your yetis, with the in that aura in order to make sure that they're able to go through now we're continuing the funnel with the king in order to make sure that they're not wandering onto the outside once they get into this part of the base but once they get in there notice that the town hall is relatively close to the outside so after dealing with the enemy clan castle troops they're going to start wandering around and they we will be using the warden ability so they're not taking much damage from it and then we can use the jump spell to get deeper in. This is where the Hog Riders can come into play a lot, along with that, the use of the Rage spells in order to support the Yetis and Bowlers as they continue to move in. The Eagle Artillery should be a huge structure to get, so if you can get rid of it with the Yetis, if you can get rid of it with the, the Yeti Mites and the Bowlers, it's definitely going to be very, very important. Then for the Hog Riders, you don't have to use anything to support them. You don't need to use a heal. You don't need to use a freeze. It really depends on your spell composition. If you're if you have space, so if you're not using a Zap Quake, using heal is not actually a bad idea. It's a very good idea, and it can support your Yetis or your hogs even further if you're interested in kind of looking at a video on that make sure that you guys check out the description because i do have a video over to my yeti smash guide as it really gave a good idea of what you should do whether you're using zap quake or no zap quake so it gives you a short idea of what you guys should be doing with the yeti smash here at town hall 12 no matter if you're doing it with a zap quake or if you're doing it with no zap quick and you're just doing it with a warden walk or a queen walk you can really offer yourself a lot of value now that is just the number five attack you want to if you want to see even more attacks then stay tuned for number four
Next up in the number four slot is going to be the hybrid. No matter if it's the zap hybrid or queen charge hybrid, this attack strategy is still very effective. So this is going to give you guys an example of just hybrid in general. We're going to break it down for you, for those of you who are new or interested in seeing this type of variation where it's a little bit different. Instead of using the zap quake on the clan castle, we're going to be using it on the multi-target inferno. This is to make sure that the healers are not getting hit by the multi beams. So you want to make sure that you are using the lightning spells on an inferno if you find that it's better to use the lightning spells in this spot to create a funnel. So what you'll see here is we're going to be starting off with the use of the lightning and the earthquake. Another thing that you can do around this time is also creating a little bit of a funnel. So you can use a couple balloons and a baby dragon in order to get rid of other defenses surrounding there. That way you can use the lightning spells over the inferno, over a couple other structures around there in order to make sure that you're creating a solid funnel. Now after this point, you can go ahead and start doing your queen walk. You can make sure that she's walking into the base and that way what you're able to do is get rid of the enemy clan castle troops and the enemy or and the town hall. So you want to make sure that you're getting rid of those. If the town hall is really in a, an area where it's going to be harder to queen charge, you might want to just funnel that side out and let your hybrid go in for it and deal with that town hall. But in this case, we're going to be able to get our queen to charge into the base and getting rid of the town hall will be very easy for the queen. Underneath the rage, you want to make sure that you are using that rage over things like hefty point defenses or going through the town hall or even going through the enemy king. So you want to make sure that those factors are coming into play. And once you've gotten that town hall down, whether this be the queen charge or with your, or if you haven't yet gotten it down, you want to send your hybrid in. Now you were creating the funnel on each side so we use the queen charge and we're also using the siege barrack and the king creating this side of the funnel is going to be enough to keep the hog riders in and it's going to be enough to keep the miners in specifically being the miners you want to make sure that they're staying in another thing that we're using is the warn ability early in order to support the push going into the core now dealing with the clan castle like the super minions it's going to be fairly difficult for a charge so you really want to try and consider bringing a poison or two to deal with them as you can see here we're using the heal spells very surgically in an area where a good group of either hogs or miners need it the most if you can heal both of them that's going to help your attack in mass so you want to make sure that you are able to heal as many of the hog riders and miners as you can now more often than not if there's still a lot of splash up in the base your hog riders will start to die out so you want to make sure that you are using the heal spells surgically in order to keep the hog riders alive as you go through if there's too much splash or if there's too much point defenses they will start to die out. However, you will still have the miners left up on the field getting through a large, a large portion of the defenses. So you just want to consider those things when you guys are doing this, but you want to make sure that you're keeping your miners, you're pushing them through the base in order to make sure that you are getting that three star. So that gives you guys an example of the number four using hybrid. Let's go ahead and give you guys the number three best tunnel 12 attack strategy. Next up for number three, we have got the Pekka Smash. This is an attack strategy that I haven't seen in a long time here at Town Hall 12, but I'm starting to see a little bit more of it. Unlike the Yeti Smash, the Pekka Smash works really, really well in combination with having the bowlers and the witches involved as well. The witches aren't necessarily a big thing to add, but if you want to use some support units that spawn some skeletons, that is really where you can shine with them. Unlike the Yetis, Pekkas have a lot more health and they do more damage, so you don't need to worry about them getting stuck on a wall. But remember that what you're doing here in this attack is you're going to be creating the funnel with this with the Warden Walk or a Queen Walk or whatever, and then you're going to be creating the other side of the funnel by using maybe Sneaky Goblins or using the King in the Siege Barrack. It really just depends on what's around there, so if you can use Sneaky Goblins to support that's awesome. That's going to be great for your attack. 
Now, the other thing that you may want to consider is lightning spells. Lightning spells are a very hidden thing that you can use against single target infernos or multi target infernos. If there is an inferno that you feel like you're not going to be able to get to with the P.E.K.K.A.s and the bowlers, then go ahead and use the lightning spells to get rid of one of them. That way, you only have to deal with two of them. So you really want to consider those things. In this base design, however, notice where they're placed. They're all placed in a sort of triangular shape form. So once we get into the base with the jump, we already have easy access through to get rid of the other two. If it's a little bit harder for us to do that, then that is where we would bring the lightning spells in. So you just want to consider different factors if you're going to be using the lightning spells or not. So for starters, we're starting with the Warden Walk, just using it to create a little bit of a funnel, and we could also use things like balloons if there are defenses on the outside, sneaky goblins for resource collectors like collectors and storages. Storages are definitely a must to use the sneaky goblins on, and sometimes it might be a good idea just to bring a lot of them, like maybe six of them in this case, but it gives you an idea of what you should be doing if you're creating the funnel. On the other side, you can do this simultaneously. You can use a baby dragon if you have one. If not, you can go ahead and use the king and or siege barrack in order to make sure that you're creating a funnel just enough so that way the yetis can or the bowlers and the pekkas can start moving themselves in. That's exactly what you want. You want easy pathing for them. So now that you've created the funnel on both sides, you can then go ahead and start sending in your witches, your queen, the P.E.K.K.A.s, and your Bowlers. Now, if you're bringing in Witches, you're going to be bringing less Bowlers. So keep that in mind if you're going to be doing that. But also, you want to make sure that you're using the Rage Spells effectively so the Bowlers and the P.E.K.K.A.s can take advantage of them. So as they're driving through, you can use the Warn ability when they get closer to the Town Hall because the P.E.K.K.A.s will really easily take it down. Another thing that you want to consider is that the witches have spawnables that basically make it to where they're going to be distracting a lot of different units. So if they're staying behind, they almost act like the yetis, except they're spawning those skeletons, which are going to be very, very annoying as they spawn them at a fairly quick rate. So you really want to make sure that you are keeping the witches alive, maybe by using free spells or some sort of combination of either really just trying to protect them as much as possible. What you're able to do via this is by keeping them alive, you're able to continuously spawn skeletons that are there, that are there to distract things like single infernos, multi-targets, Teslas, really any defense will have to waste a shot on the skeletons. So you really want to make sure that you are getting through those type of bases. Having the witches right behind is not a terrible idea, and it could really offer you a lot of value. So that is just one small thing that you can do with your attacks to really get you into the understanding of when is it good to add the witches in and when is it not a good idea. So this gives you a overall great idea on how to use it. Now that we've taken a look at the top three, let's take a look at the second best attack at tunnel 12. Next up in the number two spot, we've got the Zap Dragons. This attack strategy is tied with one of the best Town Hall 12 attack strategies as it's very, very powerful. Very similar to at Town Hall 11, all you're doing with this attack is just getting rid of air defenses. It's just that easy. The other two lightning spells that you can use, because in this example we have six lightnings, you can use the last two on a sweeper. It's enough to get rid of a sweeper, so you want to use two max lightning spells to get rid of it. Now the other thing that you may want to consider is basically creating the funnel. If you can create the funnel on one side by using an E-Drag, and on the other side by using the Sui Hero to get rid of stuff like an air defense. You should be using the Sui Hero to get rid of an air defense and get some value set. That way what you're able to do is charge the other uh, the other air defense with the dragons and the balloons and then continue to move in. Now the only difference here between Town 11 and Town 12 is dealing with the Town Hall. If the Town Hall is not protected by a Sweeper, it might be a good idea to enter into there. You can use a Stone Slammer. However, if you're going to hit away from it, make sure that you use a Battle Blimp. And you're going to see that within this example by making sure that we're able to use the Blimp to get rid of the Town Hall by using a Rage Spell. So you'll see the use of the Zap Quake here. We're using 
one of the lightning spells by the clan cat or by the town hall and the other by the wizard towers and that way what we're able to do getting rid of those air defenses and we did the same thing by using it by using the two lightning on the sweeper now what we're doing here is creating a funnel i'm going to keep it zoomed out so you can see what's going through so on one on one hand we've got a dragon baby dragon and we're gonna have a sui hero and on this side we've got the e-drag creating this side of the funnel this is just going to make it very easy for you to get rid of something like an air defense here. But once you're guaranteed to get rid of it, you can go ahead and start sending in your dragons and your st and your siege bear or siege bear stone slammer or battle blimp. You can use the battle blimp in this case in order to make sure that you're able to get into that town hall compartment like I mentioned. You will need though to use the ability to protect it. That way, it's not going to get popped by two seeking air mines. So you want to make sure that you are getting rid of that sing or of that town hall as much as you can. You can also use a heal spell as well to keep your dragons and balloons alive as they continue to move into the base. But really, when you take a step back at it, this attack strategy is very easy. Notice all these dragons here that you see on screen that are still up. As long as there's not like a hefty amount of air defenses that are still up on the base, you can easily get through these with no problem at all. It is almost a guaranteed triple. As long as you can create the funnel right, getting rid of the town hall, you're going to be all set. So just make sure that you're getting rid of at least two air defenses as much as you can. And that way, what you're able to do is easily move through the rest of the base. So that gives you guys an example of how to deal with these type of bases or different types of bases. And that, that also shows you guys the example of using the Zap Dragons. Now, let's go ahead and show you guys the best Town Hall 12 attack strategy in Clash of Clans for 2020. If you haven't guessed already, the Zap Mass Witch is the easiest and strongest attack right now at Town Hall 12. This is absolutely wrecking almost any base design here. So all you're doing is just getting rid of the multi-target infernos. As long as there are two multi-infernos and one single, you can use the Zap Quake to get rid of both of the multis and you can leave the other sing other inferno set on single alone. However, if there is a third multi-target inferno like you see here, you may want to try and enter in to get rid of this. This is going to, whether, whether this is going to be using a couple balloons to take it down, or this can also be opening the wall up by using regular wall breakers or super wall breakers, depending on the variation. Now, another thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is just creating the funnel on each side. That way, what you're able to do is by carving out this area, you can just send in all your witches in for the town hall and they're going to overwhelm the rest of the defenses in the core. So if there's an easy point where you don't have to use a super wall breaker and you're able to easily get everything in, you should be using a jump spell in this case. So this is going to give you guys a really solid example of just using the zap quake with the mass witch. So using the quake spell either first or you can use it later, it really doesn't matter because that 29% from the earthquake is still going to deal that full 29%. So the Earthquake, no matter how much health the defense still has, is going to still deal that full 29%. So you want to make sure that you're using either the Lightning Spells first, just depending on what you think that is going to be better. If you want to use the Lightning just to weaken up and see what buildings you can get rid of around the Inferno, you should do that. So just consider different things. But the other thing that you want to do is crane the funnel. Usually you want to use three to four witches on each side in order to create enough of a funnel. So you'll see on this side, we're using the king and queen instead of some witches, but we're going to be using the witches over here on the other side in order to create the funnel. Then we can send all of them in. So we've got the use of the siege barrack, which is going to be more often than not the best choice. That way the king moves in to getting rid of this multi inferno. Then for the rest of this, we can just easily deal with the clan castle with a jump. And you'll see that the witches, you don't even really need the queen too much to be with them. Because you can have the golem tanking, the witches entering in. And take a look at how they overwhelm the rest of, the, uh, rest of this base. The town hall goes down very easily. 
You have a lot of witches in the core, and if, if you can use the Warren ability over a lot of them, they're going to be producing skeletons like crazy, and they're going to allow yourself to get through a large part of the base. Even with the eagle still up, as long as you have hog riders from the siege barrack over there, you can easily move through and get rid of a ton of bases. There are a ton of witches in the core of the base, and that is just really the power of this attack. As long as you can get rid of multi-target infernos and then just overwhelm the rest of the defenses by sending all of them in, that's exactly what you want to do with this attack. So it really just overall sums up what you should be doing as a Town Hall 12 attacker. No matter which base design or which attack strategy you're going to be using, each of these work really well. And look at all these skeletons. Look at all the witches, the skeletons. This replay, this example was a very, very strong one. It gives you a really good example of how to overwhelm bases with witches. So if you're interested in seeing more content like this on each of these attack strategies that you saw here, make sure that you guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell for more educational Clash of Clans content for Town Hall 11 and for Town Hall 12. Another thing that you may want to do is feel free to go ahead and follow me over on the social and join my Discord server as well to hang out with me and other like-minded clashers within my Discord. Another thing is make sure you guys go ahead and follow or remember guys to go ahead and follow me over on the social like I didn't mention already. However, go ahead and use code CorruptYT in the Clash Champ shop to save 10% off your purchase. I'll leave a link down below for the Clash Champ shop if you want to get anything over there. Other than that, though, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll be seeing you next time. Corrupt, signing out.